Hello again. This is going to be a short video where I look at testing some mods. A few other things we're going to be looking at in the future. This is a Unity UT210E. After receiving it, I realized it had a 1 milliamp resolution and it actually was quite useful. And you can see I've made a mod to it already where I've just attached a battery pack. And the reason I've done that is a member on EV blog and myself included were thinking it'd be nice to be able to attach this thing to an oscilloscope. So I've done some preliminary testing of this and it actually looks quite promising. The bandwidth on this thing was surprisingly quite high. So I've purchased some parts to uh, try to make these mods and if those all go well I'm going to make a video showing how to make these mods. So stay tuned for that. Also in the near future I had ordered a bunch of small pocket meters. So I had seen there's quite a bit of interest in looking at pocket meters. What I did was limited the amount of money I was wanting to spend on these to under $20. This is the first one that arrived today. This is a Unity UT20. Over the course of the next month hopefully I'll be making some videos where I show these being tested on the generator and I'll go ahead and add those to the spreadsheet. I'd been asked about running a Digitech meter. I've never heard of them before. Uh, the model I was asked about specifically is a DT2843R. When I started looking up information on this meter, it seemed like it was very similar to one of the meters that 5KY had sent me. Sure enough, when I'd started looking at the pictures I had taken, the TechPower TP2844R was very similar. Both meters actually have very similar markings on the circuit board. One of the reasons I was interested in looking at the meter was because there's a mob placed directly across the inputs. On the tech power meter, it didn't have that mob populated, and I had commented about that in the video when I made it. This was a schematic I had drawn up for the U1231A. We've looked at quite a few meters, and they all seem to pretty much follow a common theme. You'll have some type of high voltage resistor, a PTC, that'll be in series with a mob, in this case a gas discharge tube. And there may or may not be some downstream protection. Let's say we hit it with our typical waveform here. If the MOV has some clamping voltage here, this is what's going to happen. Voltage will get up to that clamp. And all that energy here is just going to be dissipated inside of this MOV until it releases. Once it gets below this point here, this will go open circuit again. Of course the MOV is bi-directional, so if we hit it either direction, it will do the same thing. So what the Digitech does is it bypasses this. There is no high voltage resistor or anything on the front end. So when you provide that pulse, all that current is just going to go right through this mob. Of course it's going to go through our clip leads and everything. So it'll put quite a strain on the clip leads, put a large strain on the mob, and same thing with the junctions here, and certainly your tips out here. I would not think in a multimeter that this would be a safe condition. It would seem like you'd be much better off to have some type of a way to limit that current. I guess I'd have to see a meter where they place the mob directly across the inputs and it met that IEC safety standard. I started looking at the pictures of the Digitech and that meter looked like it had a mob that was marked 102KD14. That particular part is rated for 625 volts AC 825 volts DC and it's rated for 283 joules. So I started looking through my stash of mobs. I've got some different ones here. You can see some of the different sizes. This mob here would actually still be quite a bit larger than the one that's in that meter. You'll see some of these are actually quite a bit different thickness than other ones. So I came across this one, which is actually quite close to the one that was in the Digitech meter. This device has an AC operating voltage of 680 volts versus uh, 625, and a DC operating voltage of uh, 895 versus 825, and the clamping voltage is about 1100 volts versus 1000 volts on the one that's used on the Digitech. The main difference between the two mobs is the amount of energy that they're rated for. This device is rated for about 100 joules less than the one that's in the Digitech meter. So I thought what we'd do is apply a transient to this. 
and just see what happens. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn on the transient generator. And we'll get the camera set up. Okay, what I'm going to do is fire this with just our standard generator. So this will not be with our half cycle line simulator. And let's just see what happens. Shouldn't be a problem. Because this generator only puts out about 20 joules. That was that. So, no issues at all. You know, so this device isn't even warm. We'll go ahead and enable the half cycle line simulator. And I think we should be good to go. We'll run this without the cover on. Hopefully we can get a clear shot and something actually happens. Well, unfortunately, the video is going to be a bust. So, unfortunately, the problem with this is the way that this transient generator works, it actually looks for a high voltage pulse coming off of this generator. And this mob clamps that voltage low enough where I can't trigger up this generator. But, so the video is in a total waste. This is a 35 volt, 47 microfarad capacitor. From Illinois capacitor over here we have a 22 mic 35 volt we'll connect it up correctly I guess doesn't really matter not for this test Alright, let's just see if we can uh, get a capacitor to blow up. So if we apply enough energy to an electrolytic capacitor, we can cause it to rupture. I'd like to welcome you new people who have just joined up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Till the next meter, later.